This week's interstellar arpeggio attack is going to show you guys some new shapes for minor and major seven sweep arpeggios and help you get chicks and make money all over the galaxy. Check it out. Hello guys and welcome to this week's installment of Weekend Wang Shop. Here's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. A couple weeks ago during a Skype lesson, my main man Isaac showed me a couple of really cool arpeggio shapes that he had recently learned, and I've been kind of fiddling with them ever since. And to me that's one of the real joys of teaching, is taking a look at the stuff that my students have picked up on their own, stealing it, and then acting like I made it up. This would be a great warm up to add into your daily arpeggio routine. It follows kind of a jazzy A minor 7, A flat major 7, G minor 7, and G flat major 7 kind of jazzy proggy chord progression that you might find in a song by, I don't know, The Faceless or Cynic or something like that. But before we get into it, let's hear it again at stepdad speed. And as always, you can find a full tab over on my Instagram page. Be sure to visit me over at Ben Eller Guitars. Give me a follow, find the tab for this week's lick, learn how to play it, then upload a video of yourself sweeping through it along with the hashtag Weekend Wang Shop. Quick crash course on some of the arpeggio types that we're going to be using here. We're going to be using minor 7 and major 7 arpeggios. But just what the hell is that anyway? Now there's a bunch of different ways that you could look at a minor 7 chord or arpeggio. One way would be to say that it is made up of the following intervals. Root, flat third, fifth, flat seventh, and root. I think thinking intervallically is the best way of all to approach anything when it comes to theory. But for those of you guys who are like a little less theory inclined, another cool way to think of a minor seven arpeggio or chord is to think of it as being just like a regular ass minor chord, right? Like A minor. Plus, somewhere in there, it doesn't have to be in the bass, it can be anywhere in the chord, you're going to want to add in the note a whole step below the root. Okay, so in other words, like for A minor 7, you can think of it as being just like A minor, plus this note a whole step below the root, which is a G. I could add that in anywhere. I could put it here if I wanted to, and that's going to give me that A minor 7 chord. So yeah, again, minor chord plus the note a whole step below the root. Those are your minor 7s. And as for a major 7 chord, it's made up of 1, 3, 5, and 7 those degrees right there. Again, I think that's the best way to kind of think of it, but another way you could approach it is to say it's just like a major chord. Let's say G, right? It's just like a major chord plus the note a half step below the root. So you remember with the minor sevens we did a whole step? With a major seven chord, it's just a half step below the root. That's where that seventh is. And again, I don't have to put it on the bottom like that. I can put it anywhere in the chord, like maybe up here. That gives you that jazzy Mr. Rogers-y major seven sound. Yeah, the first arpeggio that we have in here is an A minor 7. And again, this would be something that would be intended to be played over, you know, the matching chords here. I think a lot of people misunderstand an arpeggio isn't just a lick that you can bust out at any time and it'll sound sick. It needs to be relevant to the chords that are being played against it. Because an arpeggio is just a chord. It's just being played one note at a time. So if you're playing the wrong arpeggio over the wrong chord, it's gonna sound like two different chords being played at the same time. So if you're gonna be utilizing these shapes in your own soloing and stuff, be sure to match them to the chord that's going on behind it. This is all played as triplets, so be sure as you're playing this to feel that groove underneath your hands. Feel triplet, 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 or else it just won't really feel right. So here's the first A minor seven arpeggio shape we're gonna use here. I plan that by playing the 12th fret on the A string, hammering on to 15. So again, you don't pick that second note, it's just a hammer on. 14th D, 12th G, 13th B, 12th high E, and then 15th high E. And that gives us those A minor 7 intervals we were looking for. Root, flat third, fifth, flat seventh, 
flat third, fifth, flat seventh. So far in the picking here, everything should be a downstroke except for that very last note, the 15th fret high E. That one will be where we change to upstrokes. So I've got down with the hammer on, down, 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 and then when I get to here on the 15th high E, I'm going to do an upstroke, and then a pull off back to 12. Then we're going to upstroke for 13 on the B, upstroke 12th G, upstroke 14th D, and upstroke 15th A. So it's all downs, then switch to ups, right there. Repeat that entire sequence two times in a row. Now this next arpeggio we're gonna play here is an A flat major seven. It also has a six in there at one point. But here's what you're gonna do to start it off. You're gonna play your 11th fret A string, that's your root note, hammer on to 15. Play the 13 on the D, the 12 on the G, the 13 on the B, and then you're going to play the 11 on the high E. Now just like before, triplets, all downstrokes so far except for that one hammer on. So down, hammer, down, 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 down. Now at that point is where the phrasing gets a little different and I added in that segment right there. What I'm doing here is I'm grabbing that 15th fret on the high E string and I'm pulling off to 11. This is where I'm going to change to an upstroke. Grab the 13th B with an upstroke. And then what you're going to do is a little three string downward sweep here, playing the 12th G, 13th B, 11th high E. So, so far you played. Then what you're going to do is the same idea, but instead of using 15 on the E, use 13 on the E. So I'm going to hit that with an upstroke and pull off to 11, 13th B. Then I'm going to return back to that 12th fret G string, 13th B and then the 11 on the high E again. So, so far in this arpeggio, we've worked our way up. Our first little walk down. Change the top note. And then after this, what you're going to do is just sweep down the entire arpeggio shape here. So we're going to play the 15 on the high E with an up. Pull off to 11. 13th B, 12th G, 13th D, 15th A. I'm going to do that again slowly right there and again really pay close attention to the picking. We're going to be changing to upstrokes when we reach the high notes and we're going to be changing back to downstrokes when we start on that G string, you know, going down like that. So downs, up, down, up, down, up. Now the next segment right here is just moving everything down a whole step. That's all there is to it. So we're going to be playing G minor 7. So it's back to that first arpeggio shape that we played. Only I'm going to be playing the 10 on the A, hammering to 13. 12th D, 10th G, 11th B, 10th high E, 13th high E. This is where you're going to switch to upstrokes. Pull off to 10. 11th B, 10th G, 12th D, 13th A. So that's, and then you play that a second time. Now this is going to feel just like the other major 7 arpeggio thing we did a second ago, only it's just moved down a whole step lower from where it was before. So instead of being an A flat major 7, this is going to be a G flat major 7. I'm going to be starting off here on the 9th fret A string, that's my G flat note, hammering on to 13 on the A. After that I'm going to be playing the 11th D, 10th G, 11th B, 9th high E, so that's and this is where we start mixing it up into the three string section. I'm going to be playing the 13th high E string here with an upstroke, pulling off to 9. 11th B with an up. 10th G with a down. 11th B with a down. 9th high E with a down. And then I'm going to be playing 11th high E with an up and a pull off to 9. 11th B, 10th G, 11th B, 9th high E, and then we're going to go back up to the highest note and just sweep all the way down with upstrokes. So 
13th high E pulling to 9, 11th B, 10th G, 11th D, and then the 13th A. So that entire portion will sound like this. And then I just resolve back at A, 12th fret A string here with my third finger, just to kind of wrap it up and bring it back to where it started at A minor 7. And that right there is a whole bunch of dang arpeggios. Let's swoop through it again here. A minor 7. Again. A flat major 7. G minor 7. Again. G flat major 7. And of course the hardest part of all of this is the right hand, you know, the sweep picking itself. Staying in time is most people's biggest issue with this. So definitely set up your metronome, set it click into triplets, and practice this good and slow. Too many people sweep playing is really rhythmless and they just blow through it as fast as they can get it without thinking about doing a defined time feel. So again, slow metronome triplets is gonna be your ticket here. Also critical is the right hand, what I call progressive palm muting technique where the side and kind of the inside of my picking hand is continually sliding up and down, covering and uncovering the strings as I play them. So it's kind of like when I start off, my palm is kind of resting on the low E, but as soon as I'm done with the A string and I'm hopping onto the D string, my palm just kind of slides down just a little bit like that so that it's now choking out the A string. If you don't, then you'll have all that pull off noise and stuff right there. So as you go through the strings, you're just progressively covering up more and more. And then on the way down, you're uncovering them before your pick gets there. See how it kind of slides up and down? For me, a lot of that motion comes from, I call it the pull start. It kind of reminds me of like pull start in a lawnmower, you know? It's kind of that shoulder and elbow just moving the hand up and down through the strings. Not so much of a wrist thing for me. It's more of me guiding my muting with my entire uh, elbow and forearm and shoulder. And keep in mind for the smoothest feel with your sweep picking, you gotta think about your pick as being kind of like a paintbrush, right? Where if you're painting a wall or something like that and you're going down, you'll want to have that paintbrush kind of angle like that a little bit, right? Because if it's pointed this way and you're trying to brush with it, it feels terrible, it's a lot of resistance. And conversely, whenever you're painting up on the wall, you'd kind of turn the paintbrush like this, right? Again, it goes with the flow that way. It doesn't have to be drastic. You don't have to do like what I'm doing right now. You know, that's a little bit ridiculous. But just the slightest break angle, you know, this way makes going down easier. And the slightest angle this way makes going up a lot less resistant. A lot of us do this with our strumming subconsciously, but some of us never think to add this into our sweep picking. So try that out. Just a little angle just to go with the flow. And I'll give you a couple more tips too before I send you off sweeping into the night. Uh, be sure to check out the This Is Why You Suck At Guitar, your Sweet Picking Sucks video I did several years ago. Uh, that might have some good input and help for you there as far as cleaning up your sweeping technique. And I also really recommend too, and this is a fatal flaw that I myself made, whenever I was getting into learning how to play arpeggios, I tried to learn big ass, you know, five and six string shapes like what we've been doing today. It's really just too much. If you can't do a two or three string arpeggio shape, there's no hope of trying to tackle you know, five and six and seven string shapes and stuff like that. So start small. Uh, I know at least for myself, I can only speak for myself here, but after I went back and really got down doing you know, two and three string stuff, then I was able to start adding more strings into it. So that worked for me. Strip it back, make it more simple before you start working on the big stuff. Thanks for watching and a big thanks goes out to my man Isaac for letting me rip off your ideas. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. You guys can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Ben Eller Guitars. And if you'd like to book some one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons with me, be sure to drop me an email, benellerguitars at gmail.com. Thanks so much for watching and as Carl Verhagen once said it, if you like it, learn it. Cheers guys.